Greetings, fellow Portal Masters. On October 4th, 2018, I uploaded every Sensei ranked on the channel. Five years later, oh my god, it's been five years. I've got so many hate comments and people ripping me to shreds that I've decided to do it all over again. However, I have learned from my mistakes, and I know this time I should actually play as the Skylanders, so I dedicated an entire series to it. No, honestly, Half Hour wasn't made just to try all these Skylanders again, but I mean, it helped. After five years, I'm ready to give this another go, and I've got thicker skin now, I swear. As always, I'm Crash Riles of Crash the Skylands, and this is every Skylander Sensei ranked from worst to best. Revisited. But, this is my first video since I announced my semi-retirement, so you legally have to be nice to me. I looked up the rules on the internet, and uh, said you have to be nice to me through this one. So, yeah. This video is a long time coming, so I apologize if you're still not a fan of what comes up for the list, but this is accurate to me actually playing as them, and of course, my personal opinion. So, like all of these videos, if you don't agree with me, that's perfectly fine. You're more than welcome to leave your comments below, but you have to be respectful. Just like the first time I did this video, literally the first video I ever did for ranking, I said be nice about it, and most people were. But of course, everyone was already part about the chaos thing. Don't worry, he's in it this time, okay? So like, shh, you're all good, okay? All right, let's get into this. Let's get this started. I'm very excited to bring you the updated list of every Sensei ranked, including chaos. So uh, let's get this started, but be respectful, all right? To not only me, but to everyone in the comments. I'll talk to you in a little bit, which is literally two seconds. Number 31, Bad Juju. Even though this list was created before the Villain Lock and Imaginators, Bad Juju is still at the bottom of this list as even after all these years, I never once figured out what is great about her. Using Juju Jr. to do dirty work only works in very limited situations, and her only viable move is the Whirling Blaze, which makes her instantly vulnerable to everything else around her. As always, I always feel like the constant comment will be that I'm not using her correctly, but after 8 years, I think I know what I'm doing. Oh my god, it's been eight years since Imaginaries has been released. Number 30, Hoodsickle. So for the many people who adore Hoodsickle, I still think he is kind of just bland compared to everything else that came out of Imaginators. A lot of people can vouch for Hoodsickle and how great his moves it is, but what I see is a bunch of combinations attacks that nothing really sticks out to me. Getting used to his moves like Gravity Well can work great in any situation, but when you focus mainly on the Scythe move to get you out of the same situation, it's hard for me to tell how great Hoodsickle is. I feel like if certain things were fine-tuned up throughout the game, then Hoodsickles could be way higher up on the list. I mean, there is a reason he made it to the final three in Skylar Survivor. Number 29, Robo. They say money can't buy happiness. Whoever came up with that quote must have bought Robo for the outrageous price and realized how actually boring this Skylander is. When I mention Robo on this channel, there's always two different responses. The first being people who adore him for some odd reason, or the second where nobody can afford to play as him. Well, dear viewer of the latter, you are not missing out at all. As his arrows are the only really useful weapon he has, you won't even care to use his exactly the same deconstruction laser move and the even more odd whirling destructomatic, which so many other Skylanders have done it better. Hey Skylander devs, if you're gonna make a Skylander worth over $1,000, make sure he's actually worth the price next time, okay? Thanks. Number 8, Crash Bandicoot. As much as it hurts me to put him this low on the list, I can't let nostalgia hit me as Crash Bandicoot might have everything the classic Crash fan would love, but in the world of Skylanders, it just doesn't work as well as you'd like it to. There's a reason Crash comes out with multiple lives, as you will sadly need them. Unlike Night Shift and his multiple lives, Crash Bandicoot has very low health, and you'll be taking a hit way faster than any other Skylander on this list. I do love playing as Crash, as it now reminds me of his playstyle in Crash Team Rumble, but it doesn't make him any better in Imaginators, as he is way better in the aforementioned game. Sorry Nostalgia Glasses, I'll be seeing you soon enough though. Number 27, Airstrike. Although when Airstrike comes into play during a playthrough of Imaginators, I never get upset, I just can't look past how kind of generic he is. Airstrike is a basic brawler Skylander, and if you're comparing him to the other brawlers of this game, even your created Imaginators, you can see all the flaws he holds. Now, using Birdie as a brawling weapon is an interesting and unique choice, but Tree Rex did the same things four years prior in Giants, so when Airstrike was released, most people compared him to literally one move 
with a vastly superior Skylander. How unremarkable can you be that you're compared to a four-year-old Skylander and lose? I'm sorry, Airstrike. Number 26, Aurora. Aurora is insanely fast when it comes to her moveset. It's so easy to pop from one side of Arena to another and set up some light burst swords in between, but well, that's kind of it. Aurora is only really rememberable as being Master Eon's niece. And for the five of you who didn't know that already until now, there's your fun fact for the day. Aurora is very much overshadowed by her other light sensei counterparts, more on him later, so when your key feature is how fast you are and that's basically it, I can't say too much to save you now. Luckily, you have the family name behind you, but that doesn't mean much when you're overshadowed by your much more famous grandfather. Number 25, Kingpin. Now, you're probably surprised to see a starter pack Skylar this low on the list, but as I mentioned before, years after it came out, so many other Skylars have had a lot more to offer than Kingpin. Even though Kingpin has trained so many of the Skylars you know and love, most of them have improved drastically over Kingpin as his moves seem very straightforward, but not improving much over the upgrades you acquire. When you first get the game, Kingpin is a fantastic starter to try out, but surely later on, once you get other senseis, you can see why Kingpin places where he is. Number 24, Choppy Mage. Started from the bottom, now we not that far off from the bottom. Choppy Mage may have been considered the worst during my first copy of this list, but since on half hour, Choppy Mage has improved and I adore Plague as him, but even with that, Choppy Mage is still kinda good compared to the rest. Making your choppies do your dirty work throughout is a great idea in context, but if you're forcing minions to do your work while you do very little else, it's hard to justify putting Choppy Mage any higher on the list. I'm just glad now that when I finally have to play as Chompy Mage, I'm not grinding my teeth because I finally see that he's actually not that bad at all. Plus, I do a deadly Chompy Mage impression. It is I, the Chompy Mage, and you're not a Chompy, so I don't like you. Number 23, Ambush. Okay, so not everyone who I said in the original video needed a second chance means they'll do well. Ambush is a fine Skylander to play as, especially with his hack and slash moveset, but man, the other sword bearing sensei's in this game make Ambush look... I don't want to say horrible, but I also don't want to say good either. Ambush has the honor of being the first ever sensei I ever played as months before release at Toys R Us, and all I can remember from that is exactly what I remember from him now. He's a fine Skylander to have in your roster, and I'm never upset playing as him, but I can tell you that the other senseis have a way more impressive resume. Number 22, Tri-Tip. Look at me not being biased and putting Tri-Tip in the top 5 just because he's a Triceratops. Now while I personally love playing as Tri-Tip, I can see the flaws for everyone else who doesn't wear their 3 year old glasses I do and don't just see a cool as heck dinosaur. Tri-Tip has one of the best melee weapons in the game with his mace, but looking at the other two moves, the Dino Dash and the Fossil Traps, it gives me more light into why he's mostly looks and nothing else. I still love playing as Tri-Tip, and I always have seen myself mostly using the Mace and occasionally using the Dino Dash while literally never ever using the Fossil Traps. You could say that I've made that move <laughs> extinct. Okay, so you're waiting for me to make a comment about a Soul Gem, right? Well, I feel like that would be too soon. Number 21, Chaos. There, are you happy now? Now you can all stop asking me where Chaos was in the original list or where I would put him afterwards. However, you're now literally confused as the most powerful character in the entire franchise, probably, is only at 21. That's why. If a character is severely overpowered, it doesn't make it fun. Now his moveset is insanely cool where it mixes in every chaos you've known and loved or hated throughout the six years and games making you want to continue to play as him, but I cannot look past how Chaos is just himself in this game and I'd rather play as more unique characters and imaginators and leave Chaos to be beaten by me at the end. Yeah, I still have my weird reasons, just be happy he's on here this time. Number 20, Wolfgang. He may have had a huge jump since the original list, and Wolfgang is one of the most fun Skylanders to play as, but compared to everything that is to come, Wolfgang is just kind of there. Now, since I've learned how to use him properly, that doesn't mean he is something I want to keep coming back to, even though I still think Wolfgang's Sky Chi is the best one out there. Most of the archers and imaginators are kind of bland compared to your custom made imaginator. Wolfgang is one of the better ones, even if he's not the best one overall, in my opinion. Number 19, Chopscotch. 
Chop Scouts has the honor of being the first variant I owned when Imaginaries first got released, and I felt like I gave her candy-coated version more love than the original. Luckily, the gameplay is exactly the same, but sadly, that's not a great thing. Chopscotch does have a unique moveset with her insanely awesome axe, but well, that's kind of her one and only great thing. As you all probably know, I adore her ability to play the game of Hopscotch and get a speed boost by doing it, but I just can't overlook her very mediocre third move that you don't even know what it is unless you looked it up. Go ahead, try me. Number 18, Dr. Crankcase. So many of you love Dr. Crankcase, and man, it's hard not to see why you all do, as Cranky is such a unique moveset compared to everything you've seen previously. When the enemy gets too much, send out the hatbots to do your dirty work while you stand back and shoot them down with the goo. Plus, when you get too close for comfort, you can start hitting him with the spin doctor to clear them out around you. I remember fighting him in Trap Team and wondering how good he would be if I could control him myself. Wait, what, what do you mean I could control him in Trap Team? Since when? Number 17, Blastertron. I'll be honest with you, I had Blastertron in the same spot Aurora was in. And I don't know why to be honest, I guess I forgot how insanely great Blastertron is. Here's another fun fact of the day. I finally know what the move where he curls up into a ball does, and that's another reason why he's climbed so far up. Setting up a hologram field and then slashing everyone away with the Saber Slash that not only hits close range enemies, but shoots a laser directly into the next target? He has one of my favorite tropes, being able to fight things close and farther back. Looking back, I really don't know why I originally had Blastertron so low. Oh right, I'm an idiot. Number 16, Golden Queen. Now, I didn't count this, but this might have been the biggest increase in the rankings from the original. Golden Queen is insanely fun to play as, and Pokepotvin must have known something I didn't because this is probably his favorite sensei in general. Using the Golden Scarabs to set up an area and then take them out with the Golden Shockwave and attacking everything around you with the Winged Scarab main attack? What did I miss the first time around when I played as her, as this could have been the most fun combination of attacks I could have used in my entire time with her. Although 15 more senseis are better in my opinion. Oopsie. Number 15, Buckshot. For some reason you don't believe how great Buckshot is, or how much fun I had giving Buckshot the best chance to sign, you need to go back and watch my Honesty Half Hour episode with him where I realize how insanely fun he is once you get the hang of his movesets. Using the portals to shoot your arrows through to take out enemies, or to get yourself from one side of arena to another is overpowered enough, but the fact that Buckshot makes it so enjoyable makes it even better. I'm really glad that years after making the original list, Buckshot had his time to shine and shows that he's totally worth your time. Now, if they only released Heartbreaker Buckshot, then he would be even more sought after. Number 14, Ember. Hey look, a Fire Element Sensei on this list only 14 entries in! That's insane! There must be something decent about them, right? Well, yes, the Fire Element is very well represented in Imaginators, and Ember being at 14 is odd to most, as Ember is one of everyone's favorites overall. Now, Ember does have one of the best movesets in the game where she is extremely well-rounded, but I can't deny her overall health issues, just like Crash Bandicoot. Ember has an ability where if she gets defeated, she gains a shield for 10 seconds and has a chance to survive longer. And as I mentioned in the Crash entry, having an ability to help you not stay fully dead is not a great thing. But everything else about Ember, chef's kiss. Number 13, Dr. Neocortex. Remember earlier when I said Golden Queen had the best jump from numbers since the original? Yeah, I forgot how gosh darn amazing Dr. Neocortex is compared to the rest. Even though he has that weird issue like Chompy Mage where Cortex is a sorcerer when he clearly has a gun in his hand, it doesn't hinder him when it comes to his actual moves. Giving us a nostalgia hit when it comes to certain moves in his arsenal, Cortex doesn't let nostalgia keep him back where his moves are actually really good and not just there to make you go, oh wow I remember that, and die almost right afterwards. Now, why isn't he higher up? The Sky Chi. It's still kind of just meh compared to everything else. We can't have it all, can we? Number 12, Peñata. Look at this. The character who got the number one in the best Trap Team villain being at number 12 on this list? It's almost like when we got more, it's shown we needed less. I've always been vocal about the pure fun I've had playing as Peñata throughout both Trap Team and Imaginators, but taking all the things that made Peñata great in Trap Team and giving him similar stuff in Imaginators, but modifying it a tiny bit does work, but I prefer one thing fixed. 
Luckily, everything else they add in makes Piñata so much fun to play as, however, I wish I could explode the Piñatas myself like in Trap Team, but hey, I'll take Piñata and Sombrero any day instead. Works for me. Number 11, Tide Pool. I don't care how many of you will rip me apart in the comments about how bad Tide Pool is, but you are extremely incorrect. Tide Pool is hands down the most overlooked Skylar of the entire franchise. Her ink guns are quick and accurate, and using the whale tail attack to continuously take out enemies around you works for great terrain damage. Being able to slow down certain enemies with the ink bullets is very overpowered too, as when you focus them on a bigger enemy, you can take out the smaller ones around her, then head right back into the battle. Give Tidepool a real chance for once and you will clearly see how fantastic and perfect Tidepool is, even if her moveset can be a bit flawed in the grand scheme of things. Number 10, Grave Clobber. I've mentioned once or 12 times on this channel that I'm a big wrestling fan, and once I realized Grave Clobber has not only the most strength of the entire franchise, but his entire moveset is based off wrestling moves, oh man, I was excited. Using top rope elbow drops from the geysers or that insanely powerful lariat hit that can hit multiple enemies at once, Grave Clobber is a front runner to win any Royal Rumble match, but sadly the only Rumble in Skylar's universe is on my channel, and since they took a battle mode after Swap Force, he will never get the chance to win. Regardless, I still think he's the heavyweight champion of the world when it comes to senseis. Besides for the next nine, however. Number nine, Boom Bloom. Playing as Boom Bloom a second time during Honesty Half Hour to make sure very overtired me wasn't just losing it, Boom Bloom held its ranking, but made me realize how fantastic she truly is. Even though she is labeled a ninja class, Boom Bloom is insanely unique with her main weapon, the Vine Whip, being a completely different idea than what you normally expect from someone in the ninja class. Boom Bloom also has two spectacular terrain moves with the Vine and Twine and Spore Seeds, but just her Vine Whip alone has the potential to make her one of the most fun Skylanders you could play as anytime and anywhere. A fantastic Skylander for newer or older players, Boom Bloom is single-handedly worth every penny. Number 8, Mysticat. I honestly don't care about your opinion on if Mysticat is a boy or a girl, just know that they are one of the most unique and wild experiences to play as during your time in Imaginators. When you first play as Mysticat, you kind of feel off. They aren't amazing and their main move is kind of meh, but only a few upgrades later, Mysticat becomes so overpowered in a smaller setting that you guys can't even deny how fantastic everything is about Mysticat. Using the copycat ability to basically triple hit an enemy with any of Mysticat's moves becomes so addictive to play as, and you'll be wanting to give Mysticat so many more opportunities to grow and shine. If you've thrown Mysticat to the side because of your closed-minded ways, how about you open your mind back up and give one of the best senseis a real good second chance. Number 7, Barbella. I really don't care that Barbella was number 166 on a list of 167 Skylanders ranked, Barbella has one of the most unique and fun to play as movesets ever, which also mixes with how strong she is. Barbella works great in the spam section where you can continuously hit reps to take out enemies near or far, and setting up a runic rock to smack around the area while you try to do your basic attack is something you really needed to give a fair try to. When I saw Barbella solo on the top 167 Skylanders list, I was very disheartened as I know how fantastic Barbella is if you give her your time of day, and that's why I couldn't have her waste away any lower than this. Number 6, Chain Reaction. Okay, pick your job off the floor. I know he was our number one entry last time, but man, the next five have proven themselves to be insanely great, but in all fairness, Chain Reaction is one of my favorite Skylanders of all time. The fact that his chainsaw hit does multiple damage hits and setting up his invention move, which is four chainsaws spinning in a circle, and they take out every enemy on their way to try to take you out. His Sky Chi is still one of my personal favorites though, as he hops into one of his inventions and drives around taking out enemies on the way. It's very similar to another sensei I'll talk about soon, but with Chain Reaction, it's so much more damaging and still extremely fun. Okay, the shocks are all done now thanks to this one. I don't think my heart could have taken it anymore. Number 5, Starcast. Hey look, foreshadowing came into play. I mentioned in the last entry that a certain Skylar using a rideable ability to take out enemies, but compared to Chain Reaction, Starcast can hop into his flying Starcer anytime to take out enemies and literally fly from one section to the other. 
Not just that, Stark has some of the best shuriken throws in the franchise and everything you can do mixing the Megastar serving ability and switching out to a shadow form makes this Skylar unbelievably fun to give a real try with. Every single time you play a Starcast, you can have a crazy experience that is unique from his style and gameplay every single time. Number 4, Wildstorm. Remember ages ago when I said Robo was not worth the money even though he gets an awesome level? Wildstorm is the exact opposite as he could be the best extra content available throughout Skylanders because not only do you get a fun cursed Tiki Temple level, but you also get a dang near perfect sensei along with it. Wildstorm is insanely powerful when you first get him, which is wild because once you start leveling me up, he becomes basically unstoppable. As he has the perfect mix of close range with his Storm Strike or Release the Beast abilities, and long range with Lightning Bolt and Uproar, Wildstorm is one of those Skylanders you can use continuously and never feel like he wears at his welcome or makes you feel like you want to try someone else. Wildstorm is pretty dang near perfect, but a few more feel a bit better, in my opinion. Number 3, Taekwon Crow. The ninja class must have done something right as all three members hit the top 10, with Taekwon Crow mere inches away from the very top. Taekwon Crow is such a great mix of moves, with his main shuriken throws doing great distance and damage, then pushing it even further when throwing it through a flame wall kick, and once upgraded, Big Mama appears as you can call a gigantic buzzer beak to use to your advantage, especially in a smaller area like the arena mode. Tycoon Crow is probably the only Skylar I could play through the game three different times using only one of the previous three moves I mentioned the whole time and have an absolute blast the entire time. Hey, I am semi-retired now. I could easily do that. Hmm, maybe I will. Number 2, Pit Boss. As I mentioned before, I didn't actually look to see where placements were on the original list so I wouldn't affect this one, but I do remember Pit Boss was only one away from the top and honestly, nothing has changed. Since the first time I played this pit boss all the way to this very moment, I adore every single time I put this Skylar on the portal, and every time I give him a run through, I find something new and unique about his moveset and how it works with every kind of enemy. It's wild that some enemies get caught on the soul stake and some don't, but they get affected by the viper pitch you set up earlier, and is such a great use of his abilities. In other news, thanks to you lovely people, I now know Pit Boss is named after the Pit Viper, a snake that looks extremely similar to him and is extremely dangerous. Glad it didn't change his position, this could have became deadly. Number 1, Flare Wolf. If anybody here knows me, a perfect mix Skylander could be the greatest thing to ever exist. When Flare Wolf was first on this list, I said I had to give him a more fair run in the future and man oh man, I surely did. Flare Wolf has the greatest moveset for every single player to ever exist in the world as he actually has extremely fun and spam worthy long range moves, but when close up, you can cause a literal flamethrower to take out enemies. Speeding from one side of the map to another with his ride the rocket move works great to get back into every fight, and his soul gem where he launches a giant rocket in the shape of his head makes chaos look lame in comparison. Flare Wolf is honestly one of the best overall Skylanders, and if this truly is the end of releasing new Skylanders, they gave us hands down one of the best for last. And that's my list. Who is your favorite sensei? Let me know in the comments below. And as most of you know, I'm semi-retired from YouTube now, so I'm not as active as I once was, but luckily a ton of YouTubers in the description are still at it and have way better content than this anyways. If you like this video, let me know by actually liking it, and let me know how much better this list is than the last one. I hope. But as always, I bid you farewell.